hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Awesome. How are things? <laughs> How are things? Things are all right. I'm, I'm in Chicago, uh, so <laughs> the weather's finally starting to get better. You know, the heat's going away. So. Sure, sure. Went to the pool yesterday, so <laughs> thanks. Nice. nice, strong. You're having a better life than I am then. It's, oh, I don't know about that. How about you? Yeah. Well, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's 200 degrees out here and there is no pool. Where are you at? In L.A. In L.A. I was, yeah. I mean, I just moved out of L.A. like a month ago, you know, decided to spend the rest of like quarantine for the rest of this year out here in Chicago with family. So I think that's the move. That's great. Yeah. You know, at this point, you know, the industry's kind of in such a lull, you know, for the rest of this year. We're already like more than past than half the year, you know. So at this yeah. point, um, you know, I, I think it just kind of make it work. You know, we can do yeah. this virtually. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. So, wow. I've been excited to talk to you. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, there's so many questions <laughs> I have. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I'm about to, you had a birthday. So happy belated birthday. Theresa. Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. Did you spend any, did you do anything fun or interesting? I mean, how do you spend a quarantine birthday? My you know, I'm taking it, so, Yeah, it, it was my 30th. And so there mm -hmm. had been this whole plan with, you know, I was going to go to Martha's Vineyard with some friends and do like a whole I found this out after the fact that there was like a real big plan with a lot of people to do like basically the Jaws tour in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, pretty good. That did not happen. Uh, so, so, so instead, the next best thing, a uh, group of friends, you know, a couple of, couple of people, we all got into our cars separately and drove to a, a drive-in movie theater, all, all kind of, it, it was, I don't know, there's something kind of sweet about it. Of We're all in our cars, like we all have our like masks and everything. Like the movie was Grease. Oh, that's, a, that, that's, that's a cool playing. one. That's like a literally a classic for a drive-in to see. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, was, it was great when the drive-in movie scene happened and we were all like, and you know, we're, <laughs> we're sitting in our car just like texting the whole way. And like a, a friend of mine made this, made this joke as we were waiting of kind of, you know, do you think that we're going to see like the DVD menu come up on the screen before the movie starts? Mm. We were all kind of like chuckling about that. And then 10 minutes later, the DVD menu came up on, on the screen. So we're like, oh, wow, we're really just watching a DVD of Grease. Like, great. I'm so here for this happy 30. It's just the experience. So, you know, I actually been going because there's been a outside of Chicago, there was a drive in until it closed, ironically, uh, a year ago, I was going regularly. So for me, yeah. it's like when I would go on dates or something to try to like, what? I didn't know this existed. People were stunned. You know, like there's this yeah, drive yeah, yeah. right outside of Chicago. Drive-ins um, are great. Yeah, they're so cool. It's so nostalgic. And hopefully they make a comeback now too. I think that's going to be really yeah, cool. I, I, think that's what, I think that's what's happening. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get to see certain things. Man, uh <laughs> Listen, you just turned 30. I'm turning 35 next month, but uh, you're doing a lot at age 30 with your life. I'm so crying. yeah, that's life goals right there. What a cool, I really enjoyed this movie. You know, for me, it's like what immediately kind of struck me to come to think how far Netflix has come in the last few years to do these big budget kind of huge sci-fi movies like that with, with such star names, you know, when a few years ago it was just a streaming service. It's so cool that you're able to do that and you don't have to be, you know, go with the traditional old school studios in that sense. Um, tell me when you were writing the script, uh, did you know it'd be for Netflix and streaming or were you like kind of writing it for it to be a big budget theatrical kind of release through another company, you know, another um, kind of like a big sure. budget, you know, thing? Yeah, to I mean, so Netflix had definitely been on my mind because in, in 2016, it had a couple of, of big announcements and like one of the big announcements was that they were doing bright mm -hmm. and you know that when when bright even before it came out when it was announced that that the the culture in hollywood seemed to change where you know netflix they had house of cards they had orange is the new black they were really doing it in tv at that time and once it was kind of like there's going to be this this 90 million dollar fantasy cop movie it kind of had everybody going wait what what's happening here there's there's a shift in the mm -hmm. culture and uh you know it's 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 not necessarily that i just said okay i, I want to do exactly the same thing but 
it seemed like, wow, Netflix is really taking some big swings with original properties. And, and that's the thing that they became known for in, in that era and I think are, are still, still known for now of just, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a comic book. It doesn't have to be, a, a, you know, the movie adaptation of a, of a TV show from the 70s or whatever. It's just, you know, they'll do the big, bad original thing. And so there, there was always kind of a hope that it would wind up at Netflix. But when, when we went out and, and pitched and, you know, we had, we had the script and we had Henry and Rel and, and, and Brian and Eric, the producers. So, so we all went out to the whole town and it, I've, I've never, up to that point, I've never experienced anything like it before where people really wanted it and people just really saw that there's real potential here for certainly a movie, but a franchise too. And so that, that week in, in October of 2017 was, was really uh, like a tectonic shift in, in my life of going, wait, I, this feels like it's really happening. And, and mm-hmm. Netflix was the place who, you know, they, they, they really looked us in the eye and said, okay, we see this and we really believe that this is a movie that can exist and we want to put it into production within a year. And they did it. A year later, we were shooting. Wow. That's unbelievable. Three years ago too, you know, uh, so it's, it's been kind of a long time coming. You know, when I, I, when I see this movie, I think of, I obviously thought of Bright, but I also thought about, and I want to ask you how much influence do uh, the franchises like a Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and X-Men. I thought there, there were elements of all three of them in this film in so many different ways, like the nuances of it. How much influence did you take from um, comic books and, and, you know, superheroes? Cause I see a lot of them sprinkle out through this film and it kind of like almost Easter eggs in a way when you when you look at it uh, in a deeper way I thought it was really cool tell me about those influences how it impacted it sure I mean there the movie would not exist without comic books and the movie would not exist without the comic book movies that, that have been coming out for the last 20 30 40 years um, I think that for me it, it it was very much about finding what my own lane could be you know I knew that I wasn't going to get a Marvel movie or a DC movie anytime soon. And so this idea of, okay, I know I want to play in this space of doing something with superpowers, but I don't think that the answer is to write or to create an original masked hero. That to me felt like you're, you're competing with something that can't be beat with, with mm-hmm. the Spider-Man and Batman of the world. And so, so instead it was, well, there's something about superpowers and putting superpowers into different genres. So, you know, of course, we've all seen the Fantastic Four. We all know Johnny Storm and we know what Flame On looks like, but we don't associate that character with Flaming On and then the sprinkler system goes off in whatever building he's in or the couch he's sitting on bursts into flame and then the fire department has to come and put it all out. He's kind of self-contained. And so even just looking at that one, there was this moment where I felt, you know, you could do something that feels similar but different. And if it's just about approaching it as if it was real. And so like with that, with that sequence with Machine Gun Kelly's character and him and him flaming on, the whole thing became if you were a guy that, you know, sets yourself on fire, your skin would be all gnarly and everything that you touch could go into flame. And that creates these, all these other complications. Whoever is there trying to get you, suddenly they're not just dealing with a guy who's on fire but they're also dealing with the fact that they're in a building that's on fire and then suddenly it's a set piece mm-hmm. and so it, it it was all about you know not not just homage or not just easter egging it but also just going okay everything has been done before you know we're, we're very very deep in in our history with pop culture so if it's all been done before one way or another how do you twist it in a way so that it still feels fresh and not just like man, that guy really seems like he wanted to do a Fantastic Four movie, which I don't think anybody sees this movie no. and thinks that. So, The other cool thing, I thought the the, the really, the kind of the, the best thing about it was that it's not only a pill that gives you superpowers, it has a time limit. I think the time limit really carried everything through because you only have five minutes to do whatever you have to. And yeah. that just keeps on moving the story in so many interesting ways because five minutes expire and you're you know, you're out for uh, the wolves are coming at you pretty much at that point. Tell me about that. Not only just having him get superpowers with a pill, that would kind of be easy in that sense, but that having that five minute short time limit expiration, when was this like from the beginning, something you wanted to do to have them this kind of a quick spark almost, it, it reminded me like Mario, you know, the supercharge uh, yeah. <laughs> and you have like 
love that. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, it, it came hand in hand with the idea of, of it being a pill, you know, just you think about the reality of it and you can't take a Tylenol and then be good for life. You know, you have mm -hmm. to keep taking them because the effect wears off. And so while I was writing the original script, it was clear that to have it last an hour or two, that that idea is less sticky. You know, suddenly it's like you can do a lot in an hour or two and, right. and it, it doesn't have the same level of suspense. It doesn't have the same level of stakes. And so then I think that in the original script, it was a 15 minute situation. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that worked well for some of the story and some set pieces. And then Henry and Rel had the idea, you know, they came to me one day and they said, we think it should be five minutes. And at first that really scared me. At first I was like, mm -hmm. that, that changes some, <laughs> some stuff in this script. And then now when I think at it, about it, I feel like it should be one minute. It should be 30 seconds because the, the set pieces you can do where you know, you know, pop that pill and then I've got, I've really got to have my eye on the clock because I've got to do something with this power and when it runs out, I better be out. You know, it, it almost makes it like, you know, a bank robbery or a heist. It's like, you know that when the alarm gets triggered, then you've got the three minutes before the cops show up. It's that same kind of mechanism, but with superpowers. So yeah, no, I mean, it, it was always built in, but, but then got refined as we went further along in development. Mm. No, another cool thing that I feel like what makes it realistic in a sense is that it's set in your it's, it, it's really raw. You know, you see kind of the drug culture and the people, there's a the street life, like put that in a superhero theme and it makes it real because yeah. you're dealing with real settings, right? It was real raw New Orleans. It's not like a set. It's not a imaginary world, you know, that you can relate to. How important was that for you to, to set it in a real life setting to make it kind of relatable in such ways? And I loved how even the reality of even Joseph Gordon-Levin had the Steve Gleason jersey on the whole yeah. time. You know, just yeah. make it seem very New Orleans and very authentic and real to the culture and the setting of the place. Totally, totally. Um, no, it was, it, it was always going to be in a real place. And the, the original script was for Portland, Oregon. Mm. And that that could have changed a lot of things about this movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, Portland, Portland was just a city that I knew really well. I've spent a lot of time there. And so it just seemed like, okay, I can, I can write for that place. And I knew I didn't want it to be LA or New York. Mm -hmm. And then we started location scouting and trying to figure out where's, where's a good place to make this movie. And New Orleans came up and New Orleans just has this, this history. It has this history, and I, I'm not even talking about the, the cultural history, but even just, you know, the, the, the political history. You look at Katrina, and you look at how New Orleans was treated, and, and you know, the, its infrastructure was really abandoned, and people right. were abandoned in that time, in a, in a way that is so shameful that it seemed like, you know what, the, our story could happen there. Like there's a version of it that kind of has, you know, not, not that, uh, that Katrina is a, is a movie or anything to joke about, but it, it's, it, it felt like, you know what, there is this rawness to this city where, you know, and it, it ended up informing Frank, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt character, so much of why he is the way he is and, you know, what his mission is and why he takes power and, and being somebody who really cares about the citizens of New Orleans mm -hmm. because, he would have been there. He would have lived through it. He wouldn't have been a cop at the time. He, he would have been, you know, a teenager at the time, you know, or a, a young man at the time. And uh, I, I don't know, just really opening ourselves up to not fighting any of that reality, but instead letting it really inform the script. It, it, it changed a lot for the better. You know, it, it made it so it really felt like, okay, this is a real thing that's happening. Mm, that's, that's a good perspective. And I caught that too. Did you uh, write this with in mind to be a continuing franchise or did you kind of approach this as a standalone one-off um, with an opening to a potential continuation? How did you kind of approach it from the start of the, and did anything change throughout the process? Sure. So somewhere in between is, is the honest answer, you know, and especially when I was writing it, I'd never gotten a movie made before. I was starting out my career and, and was really just, you know, trying to climb this, this Hollywood mountain. And so the dream was really just get anything made. And the fact that something was able to get made at 
this level and that Jamie Foxx is in it and like all of this crazy stuff. It's still, it's still a mind blower. Of course, mm-hmm. in the back of your mind, you, you think it'd be great to continue this. It would be great to do 10 of them, you know? And I, and I think that the idea itself is malleable enough so that it doesn't just have to be, you know, this kind of cop government thriller thing, but you, you could do a romantic comedy with, with power, you know, like a, a movie like, you know, Weird Science or Shallow Hal. It's like you, you yeah. could do that, you know, and, and my whole thing with this first movie was there's a little bit of collateral. There's a little bit of Leon the Professional and there's a little bit of Eight Mile. And now put I, I thought of eight miles in the middle of that. Right. And so that that for me was kind of the, the hope that the first movie could be its own thing. And if it was just that movie, great, fine. If we're lucky enough to do more, you know, I, I hope there are direct sequels. I hope there are spinoffs. I hope that it can be, you know, its own little universe. And and if not, you know, I think it's rad that this movie got made. Yeah. The rap scenes. Did you have any input in them? Do you did you write those lyrics? That was some of the hottest stuff. And I'm thinking like there should be Eminem going. I had a it was eight mile like a battle <laughs> off right there. You mentioned eight mile. Tell me about the rap scenes in itself because I thought they were awesome and they were on fire. Yeah, no, the the raps are written by this awesome rapper named Chica, and she's in the movie. She plays Robin's friend in the classroom scene. Uh, okay. She's she's just phenomenal. The, the, the script had raps that I wrote. And every time somebody would read the script, I would go, these are not the raps. Like, these are, these, these are the, the, the gist. And they were always, uh, I was always trying to just capture, is Robin angry? Is she sad? Is she boastful? And then a little bit of kind of the vibe of what it would be. But it's just, you know, two, three lines here or there. Not, not, trying, to, not trying to go nuts. <laughs> and I knew that if I did too much work on it that there was a version where that could be used and and i really wanted to make sure that we got somebody who was awesome and so henry and rel and i think i think jamie fox actually had a lot to do with with finding chica and bringing bringing her to everybody's attention but once once she came in i was just so relieved because she did such an awesome job throughout she also wrote the end credit song that the dominique wow. performed. Uh, so Chica did that as well. So we're super, super lucky to have her. But it was always a priority to me that there was this this musical component to the movie. Interesting. Speaking of, uh, there's a rumor you're doing a small indie uh, with Robert Pattinson might be in it. And mm-hmm. <laughs> it's about a bat. How sure. did you get involved in that project? I mean, that's a big step up for, for you, like you said, with, with this film kind of being your introduction. How do you get into this franchise like that? What was the, the call? You get a phone call? Like, I'm just curious how your involvement got with Matt Reeves on it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's one of those things where I, there's a story there and it's a, a detailed story that has some cool stuff and I can't tell it yet mm. because there, there are spoilers in the story itself. Um, I, I will say that when I got the phone call, uh, it, it, it was one of those moments where I was talking to Matt on the phone and then hung up and I was on the sidewalk. I was on the si- sidewalk in Atwater Village and I put my phone back in my pocket. And then I literally just sat down on the sidewalk, like not in the middle, but I like went to the curb and just sat there and just went like this. And just, it, it was one of those moments where I knew that my life was changing because of that phone call. And you, you get those moments so rarely, most of the time right. you look back and you go, oh, this was a moment where something changed. That, that you would then obviously yeah. it's it's self-explanatory was is there pressure with that when you get off that phone and start thin, rushing through your head like pressure or excitement i can imagine only what you could be feeling that minute because then the world's gonna know your name you're gonna you know i mean remembered for it good or bad like sure. what sort of reaction do you have and now reflecting on it you know months later and and all yeah. that definitely any feeling that you think there could be there there was it was just a flood of feelings but then ultimately just like with any other job you know any time that I am writing something there's this moment where I sit down and I go I have no idea how to do this and then you sit down and you start doing the work and things start to snap into place so there, there came a point where I really had to push out you know 
any anxiety or any hopes for what could happen or what wouldn't happen, like all of that, and then just focus on, okay, I have this, this task in front of me and it's to do this rad thing with Matt Reeves. Mm -hmm. Is the script done on your part or are you still working on certain things with that? I mean, cause. No, no, it's, it's, it's all done. They're, okay. they're all off making the movie now. Okay. So you're, you're, you're kind of on the sideline now looking for yeah. the next thing, right? I'm sharing them on. There you go. Perfect. Are you excited about the, like the whole, you know, it's crazy. Cause like, you know, when we, there was such a gap from like the, you know, the last Joel Schumacher movies to obviously Christopher Nolan. And now we potentially have a universe with Robert, Ben potentially being back. And now maybe Michael Keaton, how cool is it? Or that we have like so many Batman universes now potentially in play, you know, when we didn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's wild. I, I I think that the the thing to compare it to is is the books themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have what DC has been able to do is different artists and different writers do their own thing, and some of those takes are are fun and campy, and some of them are extremely dark, and some of them are you know uh, adventure thrillers, and other of them are detective stories or serial killer stories or whatever they are in the books. And so I just think that that first of all it's a testament to the character and just how he's 81 years old he can be interpreted in so many different ways and they're all valid like there's something there's something to love about every single version even if it's not your favorite version and it is interesting now watching like i have no idea what it's going to be like because it's never happened before but but, but it's cool because all of them are going to have a different story in a sense you know yeah. and so many cool so there's different variations versions for everyone to kind of enjoy so i think that's it works out for everyone it's like friendly competition you know sure. in that sense sure. uh wanted to kind of end off by asking what are some things you enjoy i always feel like to be a great writer or a filmmaker or even actor you need to have a rich regular life like as a person right uh, interests and hobbies what are some things that that you like to do in, in your free time whether you consider hobbies to kind of get away because obviously writing can be stressful and, and just like you know you sometimes need to clear your mind after all the work that you do what are some things you kind of like to to get away to do um and you consider like interests and hobbies outside of the industry maybe? yeah totally it's it's a great question because for so much of my life writing was the hobby it's not something that i was getting paid mm. for and then there came this moment pretty recently in the last three years maybe where you kind of realize oh wait now this is just what I do. And, you know, I, I think of it still as the hobby and, and the passion and it is, but also I need to take a break every so often. And that is tough to find the discipline to do that. So, I mean, one of, one of the big things for me has just been finding some activity and it, it changes every couple of months that this is very much my hobby. And, you know, sometimes that's, that's drawing I do a lot of drawing uh, sometimes that is picking up an instrument and learning how to play it with quarantine. I'm, I'm now going down a deep dive of, of, of learning to play the guitar. I've been threatening to do it for years and, and now there like my go. calluses are there. Like, yeah. all there. and then when it's not quarantine world, I love sailing. Oh, that's cool. And you're yeah. right in LA. So you're able to do that. That's such sure. a cool activity. I, you see, I, I love learning these nuggets. These are cool, like life things that, that, you know, kind of make you a complete person in that way. Try and try real hard. Awesome. And you were born in Bucharest. I'm kind of curious. Are you Bulgarian or because? No. So yeah. No. I, I I was born in Romania and um I I was adopted pretty young. So it's it's it's, a, it's one of those things where people see that and they go like, who is this guy? Is he is he gonna have an accent? And then yeah. it's like, no. I like I have no memories from from being wow. there. Would you ever go back to visit or? Yeah. No. It's it's. it's yeah, it's it's been on the agenda and just, you know, there there was a version where I was going to go back this summer and then now here we are not going anywhere. Hey, I heard it's a good filming location, so maybe sure, one day sure, you yeah, can that combine could, both. That bring me there, true. Thank you so much, Matt, for taking the time to talk to me. Really enjoy the film. Uh, I'm looking forward to Little Fish also besides the Batman. So that looks you, like yeah, a great you, concept. Man. And the Mega Man movie, you got a lot of stuff co coming up for you. Stuff out there. Yeah, I so appreciate that. I'm very excited for you. I'll be following you up. Hope we can connect on your next uh, future films, you know, some big things on the way so we can talk again. Sounds good. Let's plan on it. Hey, perfect. Stay safe and healthy. That's the most important thing. And uh, keep on doing a great work. All right. Great to talk.
Bye-bye, Mets. <laughs>